At this time of year, many people's thoughts turn to charity. And if you're watching this, then there's every chance that this charity is one that could be close to your heart. So good opportunity to find out the latest news at the Greyhound Trust. Well, obviously 2017 has been a really interesting year for us. We started out as the retired Greyhound Trust and we're going to end the year as Greyhound Trust. I think everything in between is absolutely business as usual. Um, we've been homing dogs, we've been doing the very best that we can for, for Greyhounds. Um, so really next next year, we're, we're looking forward to, to next year, but we're also not underestimating the impact of the change this year. It's been a lot of change for, for people. And I think, you know, the, the reality is that whenever you make a change, there are going to be people that don't like the change find the change difficult but the reality is our, our focus hasn't changed everything we do is for the greyhounds there is of course going to be more racing next year so we can only assume there's probably going to be more greyhounds in the system what are your goals and aims for next year our challenge is always the number of dogs that are, are leaving racing um, there are a thousand dogs in our kennels at any one time and um, so any additional pressure on that is going to be a worry for us and we're going to have to try and do more um, so obviously we really do need to look at how to improve our, our impact and part of the rebranding was about that was trying to have a bigger impact on the general dog loving public trying to get people to understand who we are and, and what we do and really just selling greyhounds as, as pets because as you know they make fantastic pets but a lot of people are still really kind of you know there's misunderstanding about greyhounds and, and how they transition into a family home and for owners and trainers who are watching this you might not be aware of the whole situation you've got a thousand dogs in your kennels what is the sort of waiting list at the moment for, for greyhounds that need to come in is, is there a backlog of dogs that need homes we always are well it's, it's shocking for, for us because we want to do more, but we've got about a 1,000 dogs sitting on our, our waiting list. So, you know, we, we always have that challenge that every time we get a dog into a home, we know that there is a dog waiting to, to come into us. Um, so from our point of view, you know, there's always a challenge. So any additional challenge next, next year will be in addition to the challenge that we've already got because our resources do not match um, the push for, for the work that we, we, we do, really. What would be your message to the various stakeholders in the industry what can the different people do to help you be an owner trainer tracks promoters what can people do well anybody um, in the sport and the industry can get on the new branding um, I'd, I'd love to see the branding um, delivered across all of the the, the tracks in in 2018 um, which will be a really strong message to the general public that are coming to the tracks which will really help homing absolutely convinced that the consistent messaging um, and the branding will encourage greater homing so if you're a track and you're not yet on Greyhound Trust branding please please do talk to us and um, we've developed a specific track marketing offering um, for the track so hopefully in 2018 we will see that consistent marketing across the the tracks well graham for our viewers many of them this will be the first time they've seen and met you so uh, just introduce yourself and, and tell us a bit about yourself uh, so my name is graham marsh and i've taken over the marketing communications and events management for the greyhound trust so i work very closely with lisa and the rest of the management team. Uh, I came to the Trust having spent a couple of years working over in uh, Africa for Uganda and Rwanda in animal conservation, in uh, communications there and development work, so that's my background prior to coming into this role. Most importantly, you have your own retired greyhound. Yeah, I do. I've got my uh, greyhound Reef, who I home from, uh, actually from our East Midlands branch, um, from John and Judith up there, and uh, I've had him, well, it's going to be getting on for two years now, and I'm actually thinking about adding another one to the, uh, to the family. What are your biggest challenges and, and your hopes for 2018? Um, I think the, the challenges will obviously continue for us is uh, our biggest challenge is to, to find more homes. I mean, we see more greyhounds out and about, you know, and every year we're, we're being able to continue our, the, the homing, which is fantastic because obviously the, the captive audience of greyhounds needs to grow. Um, we need to get more exposure. Um, I think that's a big challenge for us. There's obviously a lot of animal charities now competing for the same attentions. You know, we wait and we'll see what happens with the, the, the changes from the industry's perspective with the media um, uh, fixtures and such like, and we'll, we'll do our best to react to that in a positive way. I'm looking forward to some new shows. So we're gonna be trying to bring the Greyhound Trust into some new audiences next year as well. So. Historically, the Trust has tended to favour dog shows, Crufts and National Pet Show and things like that. We're going to be going to some bigger shows this year like BBC Country Filed Live, um, hopefully at Gardeners World Live as well. So um, reaching some new audiences, we're going to be obviously pushing hard behind National Greyhound Day. Last year was the first time that we 
um, put that forward as a concept. This year it's going to be timing with the Toaster Derby, so uh, which was a fantastic day for us last year. We had some great success fundraising there as well. So lots and lots ahead. Um, we'll continue working with the brand refresh and trying to, uh, you know, obviously increase the public level of consciousness. We had some great exposure this year off the back of it. We we're obviously on um, Animal Rescue Live with Noel Fitzpatrick, which was. Uh, you know really good and to, to get media companies calling us and asking for us to take part in those programs is obviously what I'm uh, aiming to do. Cheryl you're on the front line here so to speak at the Home in Kennels here at Croftview. How have things been for you this year? They've actually been quite good this year. There's definitely been an upturn. more people are interested and of course we also get repeat visitors who come along they've had one before and they they lose it and they come back for another one but generally it's been quite good. We'd always like to do better we would never say we've done really well um, we'd always like to do more, obviously, but people are getting a lot more into greyhounds now. And how important do you think it's going to be with the increased amount of racing next year? Obviously, your, your partner is Tony Collette, and uh, I'm sure you know all about that racing side of things. Do we need to find more homes? Definitely. I think there's going to be a huge increase next year. Dogs looking for homes because there's going to be so much more demand for racing. I think we've really got to up our game and find a lot more homes. Who's this you've got here? This is Rudy. He's a big baby. He's only one years old. Um, he's got a fantastic personality. He's a real sweet boy. In a, a bit of an escapee. He likes to stick his head out, doesn't he? And look at what's going on in the kennel. He's curious. He likes to know what's going on. doesn't like to miss anything. And uh, you, you must always get your favourites. But of course, there's so many dogs here today. They're just, just lovely, aren't they? All of them, without exception. Oh, we could make a case for every single one of them. But obviously, it depends on the people coming up on their particular needs. We love all of them. We'd like them all to go home for Christmas, please. If you could arrange that, that would be wonderful. Well, my next question, uh, my next question was, what is your message to people who are watching this? Please think of a greyhound. If you've got a nice little spare chair by the fire, little cubby hole spare bed going please think of a greyhound because they are fantastic they make the most wonderful pets they're not a dog that most people think of straight off but they really should do because they're perfect in every scenario I can't praise them highly enough there's so many people who work so hard to find these dogs homes what's your Christmas message to them thank you thank you happy Christmas and thank you very much for all the hard work you you do I can't thank you enough on behalf of, of the trust there will be a thousand volunteers out all over Christmas giving up time with their family and, and friends to make you know the futures for, for the dogs that we've got in our, our care so it's an absolute heartfelt thank you and it's a heartfelt thank you to every person that has dug deep and helped us this year with fundraising and donations and support you know we can't underestimate the support that people give um, and you know just thank you to everybody and I'm hoping that everybody will continue to support us in, in 2018 and 2018 we'll see more dogs homed.